go. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Let me see if I can find my guest here. Good to be with you on this is the first time I've done this as the host. <clears throat> There you are, Roberta. Let's see if she'll come and hop in with us now. Hey. Good morning, Father. How are you? I'm well. Can you see my view this morning? I'm actually in Chicago. Oh, yeah. You've left Milwaukee. The sun will rise as we're praying today. Love that. Love that, Roberta. Great to be with you here. I, uh, I am learning how to do this for the first time, so hopefully it works out. <laughs> <laughs> and it's nice to meet you on, online, even though we're from the same city. I know. I know. We'll meet in person soon. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, um, yeah, so, Roberta, you're from Milwaukee. You're from the uh, south part of the Archdiocese, right? And you're a musician. I'm, I, live in, I live in Racine, and I'm a musician, yes. Yeah, beauty. Well, thanks for especially serving the Lord with those gifts. Playing, I saw. Yeah, thank <clears> you got for... some seeds of yours, but then I noticed you also play uh, liturgically. You assist the church and everything yes. else. Beautiful. I do. Um, in fact, during COVID, it was really a blessing. I got to canter at the chrism mass. Um, oh at wow! That the it with the you know with the archbishop, but it was empty. It was there were no people. <laughs> that yeah. was sad. But anyway. Yeah, um, all in honor. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. let's jump in, and then I'll have you share, if yeah. you would, your uh, your rosary story at the end. Okay. First, I just want to list off some of the intentions from the community. Um, a general request or a, an anonymous request for uh, the repose of the soul of someone's cousin who took their own life this week. And we'll pray also for his mother, his wife, and their four little children. Uh, from Romina praying for her pregnancy, that her baby and she would be in good health, safe delivery um, from Cassidy for the Rapid City school system as they search for a new superintendent, that Mama Mary would bring a leader to faithfully lead that community and its mission to form saints in the Catholic tradition. So we'll lift those attentions up. Um, I'd like to pray if we could for, uh, yeah, just for all the young men and women who are discerning vocations um, especially for those who struggle with fear of the Lord's will and what the Lord uh, would have for them in life. I just want to lift up all those hearts that are, yeah, feel stuck, especially in the question of what God's asking for uh, in terms of their vocations. Anything on your heart you'd like to pray for, Roberta, as well? Definitely. Um, I have a, a personal intention for healing of a relationship that is very dear to me. Hmm. Um, I would also like to offer prayers for all of those with deeply held regrets. May they feel the mercy, the love, and the grace of God. Um, and for truth, let's, let's let truth be known. Yes, amen to that. And then we'll be praying as well the whole time for everybody's intentions that uh, come through the feed. So just know that if you're sharing your intentions, we uh, intend everything that you share across the feed. So we're going to lift all this up before the Lord. Beautiful. Why don't you go ahead and lead us, Roberta, if you're okay. Oh, <laughs> that's, I am absolutely okay. Um, which, um, which mysteries are we praying today, Father? Uh, let's do sorrowful if you're comfortable. Stay with Friday. I'm completely comfortable. Okay, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. All right. Um, and All right, so I will begin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell the third day. He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Um, from there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first sorrowful mystery is the agony in the garden. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. He went a little further from them, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. However, not my will, but yours be done. An angel appeared to him and gave him strength. Being in agony, he prayed very hard and his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive, forgive us, our us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The second sorrowful mystery is the scourging at the pillar. Pilate asked the Jews, what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of Jews? They shouted, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted louder, Crucify him. So Pilate, wanting to calm the crowd, had Jesus scorched. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who most need of thy mercy. The third sorrowful mystery is the crowning of thorns. The soldiers made a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple cloak, hit him, and said, O hail, King of the Jews! Once more, Pilate went out and said to them, I do not find him guilty. Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. The chief priest cried out, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and crucify him. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, <clears throat> and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. <clears throat> Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, the world without end. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The fourth sorrowful mystery is the carrying of the cross. They took Jesus and he went out carrying the cross by himself to the place of the skull. As they led Jesus away, they made a man named Simon carry the cross behind Jesus. A crowd of people followed, including women who were weeping, Jesus said to them, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children, because soon they will say, blessed are the wombs that never bore. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our fifth sorrowful mystery is the crucifixion. Standing by the cross were his mother and the disciple he loved. Jesus said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. He said to the disciple, Behold your mother. Darkness came over the whole land. Jesus cried in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he said this, he breathed his last. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, my Jesus, forgive, forgive us, us our, our sins. sins. Save us from the hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us. O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life. Grant, we beseech thee, that by meditating upon these mysteries of the most holy rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Roberta. Thanks for leading us. Yes, thank you. I have to um, tell you, if you saw me sort of look up and smile. Yeah, um, where are you? The, the, I'm, well, I'm in a, a lounge in my son's apartment building. I came to Chicago. He had a medical procedure yesterday, and praise God, all was good. Um, but the cleaning women were in here, and when they saw I was praying the rosary, they were doing thumbs up and praying <laughs> along. <laughs> praying alongside as they were really delaying mopping this part of the floor. Oh, that was <laughs> so kind was of them. So, That's great. That was so guests. sweet. So sweet. Yeah. So Love sweet. that. Love that. Way to pray publicly, too. Just inviting everybody in the lobby to be like, hey, we're praying you know, for you today. I, I stepped up the courage. This is a public space, and I thought, you know what? I'm doing it. There you go. There you go. So yeah, what we'll uh, I'll jump after after you move off. Yes. I'll have our book yes. discussion. But uh, what's yeah. give a little bit of your rosary story? So um, I'm a cradle Catholic, but the rosary was it was always familiar, but really never part of my family's routine. Um, it wasn't really until I I had children. Um, I was part of a mothers of young children group at church. We. One of the weeks um, we made rosaries, we would pray the rosary, but it still never became um, just a significant, and it just astounds me that it wasn't, but it, it just wasn't. Um, but um, life circumstances threw some curves at me and some um, circumstances ended up bringing about um, a pretty severe anxiety disorder and depression. Um, 
I lost my third baby through a very frightening mm -hmm. miscarriage. Um, and it, my, there were just a number of circumstances and um, I developed a severe anxiety disorder and some pretty significant depression that manifested itself in um, ongoing panic attacks. And my children were little at the time and um, I needed to get some help. Um, so it, I was actually diagnosed at that time with panic disorder. I'm 60 years old now, but that was when I was in my 30s. Um, and through counseling, through some medication, um, through working very hard, um, I was able to almost heal from that um, until I started looking at, uh, into you know, so many of the root causes and what it turned out is just control issues. Um, so I needed to just let go and offer my life, um, you know, to the Lord and for healing to the Blessed Mother. Um, as time went on, I, I, you're probably familiar with the Laudate app. I was praying the rosary on the Laudate app when I would walk my dogs. Um, but I came um, in touch with some um, amazing women uh, through Instagram, um, and one of these women that I came across was actually praying on many Hail Marys. So I jumped mm -hmm. on and for the last year and a half, uh, it's been beautiful. Um, I've also been doing a lot of work on just mind, body and spirit healing. Uh, secular psychology will tell people to just empty their minds. Um, but I follow the teaching also of Gregory Botaro. Dr. Greg has prayed with this community before. Instead of emptying the mind, filling the mind. So fill the mind with the rosary, fill the mind with prayer fill the mind with those things that will bring calm. And I will say I am 99% healed of an anxiety and depression disorder. It still wants to get me, um, but I have all the tools now and I'm very dedicated to the integrated spirit of keeping my mind in, in good, um, keeping my body. You saw part of my bio is my Peloton bike. When I lost my fitness center because of COVID, we bought a Peloton bike, um, I must exercise. Um, and I must take care of my soul. Um, so uh, I tend to now look up instead of looking out um, and really working on um, my, my soul and that this, is, this life is not in our control and we've all learned that. Let God have it. Um, Gregory Bataro taught a wonderful prayer. Heavenly Father, here with me now. Let me be here with you. And so I often recite that um, often if I feel like anxiety wants to get me it just reunites me with the lord and um the rosary just reunites me with the blessed mother i don't miss a morning with this community mm -hmm. if i do it, on rare occasion i might you know just for whatever reason um if i miss maybe only two times i'll do it in the recorded version this community is a lifeline it is a blessing and such a wonderful wonderful group of people and to think we're praying we just prayed with i didn't I didn't want to get distracted, but I'm sure there were over 900 people with us this morning, Father. Isn't that amazing? And what a great witness, too, to, first off, to the integration. Like, our faith is always an integrated person. Our faith is always trying to pull everything together and raise everything up to God. Um, someone asked the author's name. It's Gregory Botaro, B-O-T-T-A-R-O. -T -T Dr. So Gregory Botaro, he has, he has the Catholic Psych Institute, and he has a book um, called The Mindful Catholic. Um, and so that is very helpful. He also has a podcast free for, you know, everyone and he does have an app. Um, and so, um, as I say, my, my, the people that know me, it takes a lot of work to be me. <laughs> so, um, the most frightening thing when I was in the midst of my severe anxiety is I could not sing. I couldn't get the breath to sing. And, um, and so that was very frightening to me. Um, but uh, it's, you know, I feel like a recovering alcoholic uh, in the same sense that it continues to take work for your entire lifetime. And I think when you suffer from depression and anxiety um, and many similar things that we all experience, it takes a lifetime. And so it's just a continual journey. Um, That's the word. To, it's just a journey. Yeah. And it's a journey we make with the Lord. But with also the Lord. In community, and that's a part I, of the gift of this community is like absolutely. we're together in the rosary yes. every day. Yes, yes, and I, and I found uh, so now your your book, Adore, is accompanying me on my morning journey. But um, my prayer time in the morning, you know, I'm an empty nester, and so it's rosary and it's some kind of scripture to start my mind and fill it with what is good and with what is true, and um, so, Amen. praise God.
Amen. Yeah, well, Amen. Roberta, thanks for joining us this morning and for witness, especially of the gift of this community to help, yeah, carry you through some really tough stuff and bring, as you said, like almost complete healing and the, the residual stuff yes. the Lord asks you to keep just uniting to the cross, which is always also a sign we're not Yes. Yet, you know? Yes. And so I've got to go catch a train back to Chicago. I'm going to listen to your discussion on as I get ready to head out. So I, I right. want to catch a train back to Wisconsin. So okay. this was just a, a pleasure. How, how much the Blessed Mother works, Father, that we were paired together today. I know. Amazing. So amazing. I plan yeah. to, I'll have you over for supper real soon. <laughs> Love to. Love it. God bless Beautiful, you. Beautiful, Roberta. Thank God you. bless you. Take care. And we'll shift Thank over, you. everybody, to a little discussion of a door. Thanks for, uh, for joining us this morning. And uh, it's just beautiful to have Roberta there and just hear the witness of the rosary and how this community has really helped carry her through a lot, uh, as I know it has for, for Silver and many of you. Um, I'm really honored to be able to do this, to be able to, to be with you guys in the morning and, uh, and talk about a door. It's a very humbling thing still for me to just have a book that other people read. <laughs> like I'm not, yeah, it's just a strange thing to have the fact that your prayer and what you produce out of your prayer is actually helpful to other people. It's still something I'm learning as a priest. I'm a priest for 11 years and I still continue to be kind of amazed at that fact. Um, so Adore, we're in the second week. If you're joining us and haven't been a part of the community or haven't been um, doing any devotionals for Advent, this is a, an Advent devotional that I wrote that is basically a daily journal has some reflections each day and then some some journaling questions and um, we're in the middle of week two the questions that were gathered from the community all uh, swirled around like a very beautiful and challenging word about God's relentless love that was the the title for one of the days of reflection this week and that was the question that we popped up for you is have you had an experience of God's relentless love or what's it like to sit with the idea that you're the object of God's relentless love so I want to kind of address a bunch of the things you guys talked about while also sort of looking at the second week. We're, we're at the tail end of the second week of Advent here. And uh, this week, like each of the weeks of Advent has sort of a theme. And I tried to, to catch that in the title of each of the sections of the book. And really a big theme for this week, John the Baptist on this past Sunday, John the Baptist is in all of the Gospels. So depending on which year it is, A, B, or C, you have a different Gospel reading each Sunday. But no matter what the year, it's one of the Gospels that has John the Baptist. So in the church's wisdom, this week, we're supposed to hear right at the beginning, this kind of crazy wild man out in the wilderness wearing camel hair and eating locusts and honey. And no one's quite sure what to make of him. All these people are going out to the desert to be, to be near him, to be baptized by him. He's this really strong figure for Israel, for the Jews, and, and just for everybody in the, in the area. And his call is for repentance. He's fulfilling this, the, the prophecy of Isaiah, that a way will be made in the wilderness or make straight the pathway of the Lord. And so a, a theme of the, of the week is really repentance. And I, I drew that into a lot of the reflections um, because sometimes that doesn't maybe feel like what we're focused on for Advent. We often will think like, well, Lent is the season of repentance and, and prayer fasting and almsgiving. There's actually like a really long backstory to Advent being called like a little Lent, or there's even different times over a thousand years ago and more when, when different saints' names were attributed to the type of Lent that this was or the little Lent that Advent was. So there's a sort of a long tradition to a slightly more penitential tone to Advent. And that's why we wear violet, actually, the priest, and it's the color of the season. That's the color of repentance. And I, I think that's helpful when we ponder or we want to move with the church toward like what we're moving toward, which is Christmas, the birth of Christ. And in the church's wisdom, like every year, we have to repeat the same season. Like the church basically says, like, you can't just wake up and celebrate Christmas. Uh, you won't be prepared because Christmas is such a significant thing, right? It's, it's not just the, the parties. It's, it's the coming of Christ. And to get ready for that, we have to kind of do some work. So Advent is designed to be like the work of, of getting ready for Christmas. And, and this week, especially that, that thematic swirls around repentance or the invitation to, to repent, which is kind of what was underneath the question. The question was like, do you, do you feel yourself or know yourself to be an object the object of God's relentless love? And like when we face repentance, we're basically looking at the places where life hasn't gone well, you know, where we're not tracking well or where we recognize we've made decisions that we regret and have actually had a negative impact on us. So it can feel like repentance can feel like a heavy theme. And sometimes it leads us to a little bit of despair, anxiety, 
especially accusations, spiritual accusations. So I kind of want to like buttress the conversation around like remembering that we, we have to repent and we have to always be about the work of repentance, but we have to also work to recognize that when we repent, um, this is a, a positive movement toward grace. That in repentance, we're, we're opening our lives to God and saying, these are the places where I, on my own, continue to choose death or move in the direction of darkness. I name those in the light. I offer them back to you, God. I beg your mercy. And then receiving his mercy, especially, please God, through the sacraments, reconciliation, repentance, we are assured that our sins are forgiven. That, that in the scriptures, uh, it says, as far as the east is from the west, do I separate you from your sin, the Lord says to Israel. So there's this, this great thematic of, of Advent, as well as Lent, but really of the whole of the gospel, to repent. And if you notice, if you go look at the gospels, um, several of the gospels begin with the call to repentance. It's either Jesus or John the Baptist saying, repent and believe for the kingdom of God is at hand. Which is interesting to think about, like the kingdom of God is at hand. The gospel is, which means good news. You probably know that, but the, the word gospel in Greek means good news. The good news is coming to us. And the way that it's introduced e either by Jesus or by John the Baptist is that to, to welcome the good news and to welcome the kingdom that comes about because of the good news, you have to repent. And so repentance isn't really this like navel gazing focus on our sin. It's a focus on the fact that we have chosen pathways that are incongruent with the way of the Lord that's being made in the desert that John the Baptist proclaims. So this work of repentance is, is as I said before, it's really positive in that it's like it's moving us toward welcoming the, the inbreaking of the kingdom, the coming of the gospel, and letting the gospel become, as it were, our word. That, that the gospel, if it's good news, it's not just good news for the nations, it, it's good news for all the people in the nations. And that means it's good news for us. It's good news for me. And for the good news to, to kind of come into my heart and not just be something I hear from the outside, I have to, to clear out all the stuff that clutters up my ability to, to hear the good news, to welcome the good news, and to believe it's actually true that the one who's going to be born is the one who's going to take to the cross and die for my sins so that my sins do not have to kill me. I don't have to die under the weight of sin. So, so the good news really is good news. And the way that we get to it is repentance. So I name all that because we, we, if we want to, uh, basically, actually, if we feel stuck sometimes, we feel like the gospel, I don't know, isn't attractive to us or, or we're just like sort of stagnant or, or um, reached a plateau in our faith. Often like a really simple practice is just to, to repent, to like look inward and say, all right, God, I, I don't even really see necessarily what's going wrong here but there must be some sin because I, I can't see clearly. Uh, my heart's not free and full and alive. There's, there's something encumbering me because sin is just like this gunk that sort of clogs up the soul and, and keeps it heavy, keeps it from ascending, keeps it from being lifted up. You know, in the mass, we say, lift up your hearts. When it feels like the heart's really heavy, often that's because of sin. Repentance names the sin and offers it back to God. So I say all that because we can get kind of, heavy of heart as we repent and start to think, well, I'm just a, a miserable wretch or, you know, I'll never get over this sin or, or who am I? Like maybe God's mercy and God's love are, are beautiful things, but not for me. Um, and that's a place where we really do suffer accusation, um, which is not from within us. There's a psychological component to accusation. We kind of beat up on ourselves, but the enemy of our souls is the accuser. And he's identified that way in the scripture, Satanos, the, the, even the name has, has to do with accusing the scriptures talk about the accuser of our brothers who's cast out at the end of time. So when we start to notice like feeling wretched uh, under repentance or starting to despair, it's worth just noticing that like, yep, yeah, that could be like my own kind of head talking. That could be my psychology, but there's also probably another source, another spirit who's not the spirit of God who wants me to feel miserable and wretched. And, and that's just a place to take refuge in God. In the scriptures, when he's talking to Israel about facing a foe who's much too powerful for them, God says, you need only stand still. I will fight for you. And, and how often is that the place that we like get things out of order? That we see the battle, we're like, okay, here comes the battle. Here comes the tempter. Here comes my temptation. I need to battle against this. There's, there's a component of, of exercising virtue in place of vice, putting good practice in place of bad. That's on us. But in the spiritual battle, 
the, the enemy of our souls is, is smarter than us. And, and he's a spirit who um, attempts to outsmart and to deceive us. And the Lord opposes that type of enemy for us. The Lord fights for us. When the foe is too strong, it's God who comes to our defense. So a lot of repentance is actually connected to like coming under the shadow of God, coming under his wing, coming under his power and letting God assert his authority over our lives. When we repent, when we return to God through the sacraments, when we, when we claim the power of God's name by proclaiming it in our lives, we come under the authority of God. And that means we're not the ones who have to do the fighting. We, we need to, to welcome the power of God into our lives, which shatters the chains. Then we put in practice the life of virtue. We live out of the grace of the sacraments. We, we, we lean into our daily prayer. But, but it's God's work in us and God's fighting in us, especially or around us, that, that keeps the enemy voice from saying or from, from really convicting us that those lies we grapple with could actually be true. So just a really invitation to surrender. As we repent, we also have to surrender. And, and often that surrendering in our repentance is what keeps us from, from feeling and knowing the fact of God's relentless love. Like one of your questions, one person just shared, like, I often think my sins are too great for God to love me. And that's a really humble admission. And isn't that like the truth for all of us in some way that like when we do start to repent and take a really good look inside, we often, I don't know, it feels like there's this like secret place in us that, that no one can see. And if they could see it, they would reject us. And so we adopt a facade, you know, where we try to, to, to put, out in front, the stuff we think will attract people to us, the stuff we think will make them love us, makes us attractive to the world. And, and that actually is very demanding because we have to uphold a facade while we sort of hold and check all the stuff in us that we think is repulsive. And we end up living kind of a, a double life. We spend a lot of emotional and spiritual energy kind of trying to, to hold that stuff down and hoping no one really sees us. The, the paradox there is like, at the depth of our hearts is the desire to be seen. You know, like we, we want to be seen and found uh, delightful, found lovely. At the same time, we're afraid to be seen because we don't necessarily like what's there. And so really we're kind of caught under this, this paradox and this real tension in the interior life. We know we're called to repent. We're called to come out into the open, to beg God to, to heal us and to free us. And we're also convinced that the stuff that's in there is so repulsive that nobody could love us. So right there, when we find that tension, that's a place, that's a really sacred place to actually notice our hearts uh, when they start to feel stuck or we start to feel this contradiction. Like I want to be seen. I'm terrified of being seen. Um, I want to name my sin. I'm terrified of looking at my sin because, because then I'll be um, found worthless or, or I'll know myself to be worthless. All that stuff, like right there, we need to kind of freeze the thought process and turn our minds to God and make an act of faith. And sometimes it's as simple as just saying Jesus name out loud, but, but that, that breaks kind of the cycle of our getting stuck within ourselves as we engage the work of repentance. It also derails the attacks of the enemy as the enemy tries to convince us that God's relentless love is there, but it's not for me. It might be for other people, but that's not a personal reality. So if you've, if you've encountered that before, if you've heard the, the songs and the, and the words of scripture about God's endless pursuit of us, and you felt like, nah, maybe not me. That's a place to really offer that, that little phrase to God. When you say, maybe not me, I say, Lord, is that for me? Like, Lord, is, is your relentless love, are you really relentlessly pursuing my heart? Uh, the, the phrase, the expression in adore in the Advent devotional comes out of the scripture. That is one of the gospels for the week. One of the weekday masses, which is the, the parable of the, the shepherd who goes after the one lost sheep and, some, it's a very simple meditation. I just was with um, Mother Teresa's sisters, the Missionaries of Charity. I was helping four of them get ready for their first vows, which was uh, such, such a beautiful experience. Um, but, but a theme that came up through the retreat was in their own hearts. They were engaging a lot of their stories and noticing how much they feel accused and, and worthless because of what they've done or because of who they think they are. And uh, several of them in particular just began to pray with that image from scripture because it came up in the readings. And they, they made a meditation that maybe is suggested to you is they just pictured themselves as a lamb. And, and I, it sounds a little cheesy and you got to use your imagination because there's all these reasons that we're not lambs. But we're also lambs to the Lord. Like he uses that image in multiple places. And, and a powerful image is just like to sit with this idea of being a lamb 
and noticing that like lambs don't really know how to kind of navigate the world, how to defend themselves from the wolves and attackers. And, and to be a lamb is, is in a sense to be sort of helpless and to have to, to cry out. If you ever have seen lambs in real life, they're kind of always bleating. They always make this little noise and they, it's a funny sound. And it's really just the cry to the older sheep that, that they can't be forgotten. Like, don't forget me because I don't know where to go. And isn't that actually like <laughs> as simple as that phrase is, isn't that like a beautiful thing to, to say in our own prayer? Like, God, don't forget me because I, I don't know where to go. And just to, to cry out in that way. One of the things that I put into the, uh, one of the reflections for the week was Augustine's line um, that, that man is a beggar before God. I remember when I read that first, I was in seminary. I was like, ah, I, I don't want to be a beggar before God because I want to have something to give God. And maybe this is more like a masculine tendency, but I want to accomplish stuff and bring it together. Like, look what I did for you. Like, look how, how much I'm doing for the kingdom. Look at, look at the way I'm putting your gifts to use. And, and God's pleased by all that. But, but in another way, like God just wants to be our savior. That's why he took up flesh was to save us because he knew that we couldn't save ourselves. And, and what Augustine's getting at is for, for, for that salvation to become a part of my life, for me to actually take up my cross and follow him as Jesus asks, there needs to be a movement in my own heart where I, I repent and where I acknowledge that actually left to myself, I'm just a beggar. All I can do is, is look at the Lord and cry out. All I can do is, is beg for help. And so if you're in that spot where the idea of God's relentless love Maybe it doesn't even relate with you. Maybe it's repulsive. Maybe it just seems like a nice idea that, that someone spun to make you feel better about yourself. Now, it's a revealed fact. And, and if it doesn't come into your heart, it's because there's some obstacle there. And the best way past a lot of the obstacles in our hearts is not to, to conquer them ourselves, but to surrender to God by, as Roberta said in uh, the rosary just afterwards, by not looking around so much, but by looking up. Uh, the beggar who's crying out to God isn't focused on his or her tattered clothing, isn't focused on anything in their surroundings. When they're begging, they're looking up to the one who might give them something that could help their poverty. When we beg God for his mercy, for his healing, for his help, for the increase of faith and hope and love, we're looking up at God with the, the posture of a beggar, being like, you have something that, that actually I really need. And, and I just have to ask for it. I have to cry out for my own poverty, like admitting that I can't do it myself and I need you. And, and what Christ is assuring us in the gospels, especially in the parable of the lost sheep, the lost coin, but over and over again, even in the Old Testament, the assurance is that, that when, we, when we seek God in prayer, we'll find God. And God comes out to, to find us. God's always searching us out pursuing us and waiting for us to return like the father in the parable of the prodigal son. So that's to kind of get at a couple of the questions that a number of you were, were raising up this week as we confront repentance. And really, I, I hope as you, as you go through this week of, of really um, encountering the call to get ready for Jesus, and as you, as, you, as you profess your sins or you confess them, and as you profess the mercy of God, that you would find refuge in the fact that this is a common human dynamic to grapple with our fallenness and then out of that to be saved because that's really just the story of our salvation. That's the story of Jesus. So a couple of things what would to, to kind of develop that a few of you shared things like um, this, this idea of relentless love is really beautiful. And I understand the idea as an idea, like in my head, but it hasn't come to my heart yet. It's not something that I feel personal. Um, I have trouble allowing him to, to receive that or to speak that into my heart. I, that's a, a number of your questions around that. And that's maybe what I'd speak to here for a moment. Um, I think one of the questions you asked is really key. I have, or, or the ways you phrased it, I have trouble allowing him. I have trouble receiving him. I remember watching a religious sister who came to town. She was speaking to our, our girls high school about vocations and discernment. And she said, you know, one of the most important thing, if not the most important thing we can ever do in life is let God love us. And, and when she said it, I was like, yeah, maybe. I never really thought about it that way, but like, I, I think I see what you're saying. But the more I thought about it, especially for high schoolers, like, I don't think they'd ever heard that before. And the more I thought about it for myself, I was like, yeah, that's actually, that's the inbreaking of the kingdom. Actually, repentance is not this sin-focused reality. It's this focus on the fact that I actually need something that heals me. I, I need the love of God. And, and I just don't really 
get how to do that. And, and again, it's not something we climb up into and acquire for ourselves. It's something we beg for. And so like, what a, what a different approach than our kind of fallen human condition. What a different approach to say, like, I just, I have to let God love me instead of trying to win God's love or, or claim it and, and acquire it for myself. God is going to bestow a super abundance of grace and gift upon the one that he loves. But, but God isn't forceful. I was talking to a, a Protestant gentleman the other day. I was at a hotel house just before the retreat. And uh, this really engaged guy who spent a lot of time with scripture and a lot of time doing work in, in gospel and evangelization stuff. And he, he used this, ex this expression. He said, God is a perfect gentleman. And I've never really heard of a Catholic say that, you know, and I never really thought in those terms, but what he's getting at is really good. Like God is a perfect gentleman, meaning he like totally respects us and he invites us, but he doesn't push himself on us. He doesn't force us. And, and that segues or, or connects really well to this idea of like, I need to let God love me. Uh, I can't make God love me, but I also I don't have to like achieve God's loving me. God's offering his love to us. He's offering himself to us. That's the cross. That's the Eucharist. I have to welcome that. And I have to welcome that with an open heart. Um, going through the motions is one thing, looking at the gospel, going to mass. But when I, when I begin to, in my own heart, recognize that, like, have I let God come into this place? Have I opened the door of my heart? St. Ambrose says our heart has a door and the door is faith. Have I opened the door of faith to him who knocks? Who does it push through, but, but lets me know he's there. Have I opened that door and, and like let God, who is love, as St. John tells us, have I let God come into my heart to love me? That, especially for men, that's hard, but it's hard for all of us because it means admitting our poverty and it means admitting that we are not surviving on our own. And it means we have to acknowledge all the different mechanisms and activities we have in place that kind of push God back our sinful ways. Again, repentance. So to get these things of our faith from the head to the heart, I mean, that's one of the, the greatest interior quests of the human person, you know, like it's, it's the many different phrases surround like how we describe the space between the head and the heart. It's a thousand miles or whatever we might say. It is quite a, a distance, but, but the beauty is it's more about letting it come into our hearts than pushing it there or, or forcing it down there. We might understand the truths of our faith in our heads. We have to welcome them to sort of settle down into our hearts. I'm a, a big fan of the Carthusian saints and there, there aren't a lot of named Carthusian saints because they live a very hidden life in solitude. But one of my best friends from seminary uh, left our group in seminary and joined the Carthusians. And, and they live in this radical solitude. And he sends me these writings of some of the, the older Carthusians who've passed and they're just really beautiful. But one of them, uh, one of the writings says that, that silence has a, a draw upon itself or has its own weight. That when we collect ourselves from the world around us and we turn our attention back to God and we quiet down, when we start to be quiet, silence draws us down into deeper silence. And, and I, I, really, I really hold that up to you as an invitation for, for Advent as it gets busier and busier and busier to, to observe the places where you've got 30 extra seconds to be quiet you know like i know life is crazy a lot of times if you've got little kids running around but where you can like oh the kids are sleeping there's a pause i'm gonna slip to the side room here and just like close my eyes and breathe a little slower and be quiet and turn all my attention to god because what the carthusians are telling us is that draws us down into the silence where god lives where god speaks where god whispers where god loves and and i'd say that same sort of movement is actually how we, we get out of the intellectual trap sometimes of overthinking the teachings of our faith or overthinking how God actually puts his mercy, his love into my life, how I actually invite that. We get out of some of that thinking and we just settle down into like allowing God to love us or allowing God to exercise his mercy, allowing God to show me where I need to repent and where I can articulate verbally and especially in the sacraments where I can name places where I'm keeping God out and, and thereby I can open the door to my heart. But when I open the door to my heart, I have to also let God come in there. And there I have to just let God love me. God, who's this perfect gentleman, God, who's re respects my will and isn't going to push his way through the door. But, but a part of the way we kind of span this gap is, is by silence and by the cessation of some of our interior activities, by quieting down our attempts to, to win these things 
and by by welcoming them through repentance and then through silence to be the way that God spans that gap between my head and my heart or the way that I I let God be who he is for me a loving perfect savior who is relentlessly pursuing my heart and so to loop back to the question um, relentless love God's relentless love for me to, to not relent means to never stop like without relenting unrelenting this is as it were the posture of God toward the sinner that, that God's face is turned toward the sinner as the prodigal son's father was looking to the horizon hoping for the return of his son in that scripture you notice like as soon as the son is seen at a distance the father runs out it's because he was watching the horizon and it's beautiful to speculate like how often for how long for how many days how many hours a day was the father looking to the horizon checking to see like is he coming back yet i miss him i love him i want him back and as soon as he came back he runs out that's the that's the shepherd running out to find the lost sheep it's the celebration of god when we open that door and say hey it's a little messy in here. I'm not actually able to clean it up myself. And I don't know how to, how to really just be who I'm supposed to be. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop trying to do all that stuff. And I'm going to let you love me. Because out of that love, the Lord comes to the beggar. He comes to the leper. He comes to the cripple. He comes to the blind, the deaf, the lame. All these people who were like stuck in inactivity or who weren't able to engage the community because of their sin or because of their sickness. He comes down to their level. He meets them face to face. He looks at them in love and then blessing them, healing them. He lifts them up out of that and he reintegrates them into the community. He comes the same way to each one of us. And, and it's really our work there is really just to, to not be afraid to let him look us in the face and look us in the eye and look us in the heart and say, hey, you don't have to stay here. Like, I know it's a dark place. I know you feel like your sinfulness and your wretchedness and your leprosy and your ailments are, are so repulsive that you have to live on the outskirts of the village, not really a part of the community, at least not completely. He comes right there and he's like, hey, I have been waiting for a chance to heal you. I've been waiting for a chance to remove your sin, your sickness, your leprosy. I've been waiting for a chance to, to bless you. It's in the scriptures when he looks at these people, he says, do you want to be healed? Do you want to be well? And another place he says, what do you want me to do for you? I mean, the, how stunning is that? Like the Lord, that, that's the blind man, right? Bartimaeus. The Lord looks at this notoriously blind man. Everybody knows what's wrong with Bartimaeus. And the Lord looks at him and he's, he lets him, Bartimaeus, name what he needs. What do you want me to do for you? And I mean, people be like, he wants to see, dude, he's, he's blind. Like that's Bartimaeus. That's the guy who's been blind forever. Like, what do you mean? What do you want me to do for you? It's, it, but it's so deferential to the Lord. He's like, no, what, what on your heart, where are you stuck? Or what's keeping you from wellness? Do you want to be healed? What do you want me to do for you? And then later, in a number of places in the Gospels, it's faith that makes it possible. Yes, I believe, Lord. I believe you can do this. Help my unbelief. And so maybe that's our sort of sequence for the day and for the week, is to, to know that the Lord, relentlessly pursuing us, is also looking at us, saying, do you, do you want to be well? Do you want to know my Father? Do you want to be forgiven? Do you want to be healed? And, and then like to be specific about that, like the Lord looks at Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? Well, okay, what does wellness look like for me? What does is, what is freedom from sin look like for me? What does is, what is healing look like for me? To be able to name these things to God and then to know that God is in pursuit of our hearts because he promises he is, he tells us that all through the scriptures and he wants to lift us out of our sin. Then we have to make an act of faith. Like, Lord, I believe that your love to me could actually save me. I believe you could heal me of this. I believe you can forgive my sins. And sometimes that takes work, which is why the father of the demoniac is like, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Lord, I have faith, but it's not quite enough for this all to move from here to here. So help me. Give me an increase in faith so I can welcome your healing power. So friends, we're at time. Thanks for, for, uh, for joining me. I'll be back next week, Friday, and the week after Friday as well to continue these conversations. But, but I just, I'm grateful that you're uh, on the journey for, for Advent. And just an encouragement to keep going, to keep uh, with the movements of the liturgy, with the movements of a door, the, the book we're reading through with those daily reflections, to, to let the Lord come to you and look at you and say, hey, I'm, I've been pursuing your heart for since you were born, actually. And, and there's still parts of your heart that I haven't won. Well, can you let me win? <laughs> can you let me have your heart? Can you let me love you? Uh, because at the end of the day, 
as said, one religious sister said to all the girls in our high school, that might be the most important thing we could ever do is, is just let God love us, which is actually quite demanding because it demands we open our hearts to him, the door of faith that our heart has. We say, hey, God, I, I just need you because in fact, I'm a beggar. And in my poverty, I know that you can make me rich, but only with your gifts. So I love this. I could talk all day, but <laughs> we need to get to the day. So a gift to start with you today. I love this community. I'm so proud of everything you guys are doing. And I can't wait to be back with you guys next week, Friday. Uh, let's pray for each other until then, especially that Advent and the themes of Advent would not be lost on us and not lost on our world so that we can indeed run forth to meet him at his coming with righteous deeds. May God send his Holy Spirit upon all of you who are listening, all of you who will listen later. May the Holy Spirit stir your heart right now to welcome the love, the mercy, the beauty, the power of the Father and the gift of the heart of the Son through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and the prayers and protection of St. Joseph. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Be well, everybody. We'll see you soon. Prayers till then.